Well, this is it. The beginning of the end for the greatest all-time Ricky Carmichael's full-time racing career. The next time we're going to see him will be in San Francisco as he shoots his focus from two wheels to four. He said earlier this afternoon, though, Phoenix is probably one of the most memorable tracks he's actually been on. He's won here four times on three different brands of bikes. And he's also the only rider in the country to have back-to-back with. Everything from the beginning must have an end. And for tonight, it's Ricky Carmichael. Ricky sporting a baseball-looking pinstripe riding gear as we show you our up close for the main event. It's 20 laps, 20 riders, 25 points going towards the AMA championship to the winner. Here's our Honda starting grid, and you will notice there's actually one extra rider, Paul Carpenter, taking advantage using a provisional to make it into the main event. Carmichael, Stewart, Chad Reed, maybe fill them in her way. Yeah, I'm thinking that uh, somebody else is going to surprise us with the whole shot here tonight. Here's I, the onboard camera. I think Michael Byrne on the Rockstar Suzuki is a prime candidate, a great starter, and uh, she would be great for our helmet cam to see him out front. but then James Stewart just snuck by on the inside down that first, first rhythm section. Stewart blasts out of that big corner, and here comes Carmichael on the four. He's got a, he's got a little bit of work ahead of him. He's got some, uh, some guys that are putting in some really good rides tonight in front of him, and he doesn't want to let Stewart check out any further than what he is right now, but I think it's going to be hard to stop that. He's trying to catch Kevin Windham. This is the view for Michael Byrne right behind him on the Rockstar Suzuki. And behind Byrne is Chad Reed. Windham definitely got something to prove, had a less than desirable main event last week. I think his team's looking for him to uh, really show some determination and uh, put in 20 great laps tonight. A key thing to remember, Jeff, is that Ricky Carmichael has been the fastest rider here in Phoenix every time he's been on the track. Oh, yeah, definitely. He's had a great weekend. Looks like they got the Suzuki dialed in. Just goes past David Billman there. And what they worked on this week from, An from last week, Anaheim won, was actually making the bike turn. The interesting thing about Carmichael, he's not going to be riding next week. He's only riding an abbreviated season, but he still works super hard each week to win. Ricky, to oh, Nick Way, or David Billiman. That's David Billiman down very hard. He's moving a little bit. He might have... Uh, Came uh, through the, the rhythm section. The Astros medical crew right there to take a look at David. Meanwhile, up front, James Stewart. Stewart doing just what he has to do to get out front here, stay clean, stay away from the other riders. He's going to come through this rhythm section where Billman's down. Now the riders will still run through the section, but no passing can take place during that section when there's an injured rider there being attended to. I had a long conversation with James's dad, affectionately known by everybody in the sport as Big James, as to where the future is well let's go back and take a look first at what happened to David Billiman. They were on board with Michael Byrne coming through here by the finish line. These guys got a pretty heated battle going on. Billman opts to the right side as he comes in. He single triples and he comes up short and goes over the bars hard. Just drives himself into up face and one of them jumps. They're going to red flag the race to get more medical attention to David. Now, this is something that we uh, have not seen. Well, while the red flag is out, the race will come to a stop. We'll take the opportunity to take a quick break, and we'll be back to Phoenix for more after this. What if you were pulled from the amateur ranks and given the opportunity of a lifetime? A multi-world champion team manager, the greatest of all time for a mentor, 
Suzuki's best ever 254 stroke. A team who wants it as bad as you do. The RMZ 250. How far could you take it? After an absolutely vicious crash, David Villeman gets up under his own power and walks off the track. The Astros medical crew doing a great job of attending to David Villeman, and he walks away. We are going to have a full restart after that red flag. 20 fresh laps. Here we go. This time, the whole shot. It looks like he goes to the 43 machine of Jeff DeMent, but Carmichael gets an incredible start around the outside. He's into the lead. Where is Stewart? Here he comes on the seven in second. That's this that is time during the low 41s, and there are a couple seconds off right now. That just shows that the tracks get very slippery. And, uh... Does that give an edge to either one of these riders? Is either one better when the track gets slippery? No, I don't think so. We're looking at the two greatest Supercross riders on the planet. And uh, right now, it's much better to be where James Stewart is, believe it or not. He gets a chance to pace himself and watch Ricky Carmichael's lines and figure out some places where he can make the pass. It's, uh, it's a nervous position to be up front because you don't know what the guy is doing behind you. You don't know if he's moving around. You don't know if he's letting it all hang out or if he's doing it very easy. One thing, though, Jeff, is it's very difficult to pressure Ricky Carmichael into a mistake. Yeah, he's, he's been around a long time. He's had plenty of pressure, and he deals with it well. I think the two sections are going to be the whoops. And, uh, just, I think James Stewart is setting up Carmichael for the second set of whoops. I think he's where we talked about the inside line is left open. Stewart's been making it, making himself a line on the inside each lap. Here comes Stewart. He's got to pass that time. Well, he chose the first set. Stewart takes the lead, and you can hear the crowd at Chase Field cheering loudly as they exchange the lead. Now, can Carmichael kind of challenge back? We talked about how they worked so hard on this Makita Suzuki to get that front end to load better so he can get through the corners better. Does it seem to be working for him? Well, at first, I sure thought so, but uh, Ricky commented that last week that Stewart just seemed to be able to turn the bike lower out of the berms and get get going down the straight sooner. And Ricky was still he was driving deeper into the turns, and I think that's happening a little bit again tonight. James Stewart on the monster Kawasaki out front, leading here in Phoenix, licking the sweet back-to-back -back weekends, winning at the last round at Phoenix, and now looking to pack it up here in Anaheim and Phoenix. Here's a progressive hole shot replay. And you see Jeff DeMitt coming from way on the outside here, staying on the gas, just beating James Stewart to the line. With a progressive direct full shot award. And the pass for the lead was completed like this. Like I said, St Stewart just comes into these whoops so fast. He just entered with so much speed. Carmichael had nothing for him at the going into the turn. Closing in on the halfway point here. Chase Field. James Stewart continues to lead. We'll be right back for more after this. Welcome back to Phoenix, the yeah, Mobile Supercross Series in action in Chase Field. James Stewart leading on his Kawasaki. Yeah, this battle for the lead has just been so good. We stayed up there. We're going to get a chance to see some uh, third and fourth right now. I'm sorry, fourth and fifth. Kevin Wyndham and Ferry. Best battle on the racetrack. Wyndham on the red Honda, number 14. Here comes Ferry, Stewart's teammate on the Monster Kawasaki team. On the number 15. We talked about how much pressure was on Kevin Windham and joining that battle. Travis Preston on the red number 11. Here's Barry. Oh, he tried to get inside, couldn't get it done. And Michael Byrne with our helmet cam on the Rockstar Suzuki is right at the end of that pack. These guys, you know, I, I really thought that these guys had a lot to prove tonight. 
And uh, so far, they're battling it out. Riding with Michael Byrne. Perry again applying the pressure to Wyndham. Preston on that number 11 had the factory ride at Kawasaki that Perry now has. Look at this section. These guys, some of these jumps here, it's just incredible that they can race each other, battle, you know, wheel to wheel through, uh, you know, what are some pretty tough obstacles and some pretty tough sections. How much of that has been the improvement of the riders or the motorcycles it's over just, the years? It's just the evolution of the sport, but there is no doubt in my mind that the 450 machines here in the last couple of years have made some huge improvements. They have so much low-end torque, not to mention great horsepower, but the torque allows them to ride the machine at a lower RPM and get more traction on a slippery track like this. Preston coming around Ferry. Remember, he lost that factory ride just this past winter to Ferry. So a little bit of personal revenge there to get back in front of that green number 15. Preston so close to the podium last week with the fourth place, really seems to be comfortable and, and uh, happy riding for Factory Connection again, which is a team that he has a lot of success with as a lights rider. I was saying, Chris, it was actually Mike Byrne that lost that ride. Yes, yes, correct. These guys uh, still pretty close. Look like Barry and Byrne backed off a little bit there that lap. A couple, of, a couple of Honda riders I'm sorry, Jeff. for the Honda supremacy. I'm sorry, Jeff. It's actually Michael Byrne that's closing in on Ferry now. So that storyline does come back into play as Byrne tries to get around Ferry. Here comes Preston on the outside of Wyndham. I always look for both of these guys to race each other pretty clean. They're both teammates. And actually, what they have in common is they're two of the taller riders on, on the circuit. They uh, have uh, similar riding styles because of that. Is that an advantage on the bigger 450? Well, you got to think so, because these bikes are so much to handle. But, uh, you know, along with being that tall, usually comes wearing a pretty big boot. It makes it, uh, you know, they have to extend the shift levers, the brake levers, things like that. Preston, five, gets around Wyndham. That's for four. And Byrne closing in. Looks like Byrne has gotten around Ferry. He was now chasing after Wyndham. And Carmichael has closed the gap back up on James Stewart. Less than a second between the two. I think we're going to see Ricky Carmichael. He's always talked about he wants to be in it in the last five laps. And he feels that his advantage is in his fitness and his mental strength. Here's back to Michael Byrne now. Battling with Kevin Windham, and Bird gets around him. That should move him up to six. Well, Windham. Kevin Windham wasn't happy with performance last week. He's not going to be thrilled with this one either. Yeah, he really seems to have, uh, if he doesn't have an injury or, or a mechanical, uh, he just seems to be off the pace, maybe lost a little bit of mental focus. No problems with that for James Stewart tonight. The hardest thing they say for James is to learn how to ride just fast enough to win. There's no doubt he has speed, but this, keeping it in control just to get to the finish is the thing the team is working on the most with him. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. He just he just shows so much speed, and if you look at certain races last year, that if, if he just backed his lap time down a little bit, uh, maybe rode a little more comfortable, uh, you know, he still would have won the races. So where's Chad Reed? Here he is, the Australian rider with the hurt shoulder, gutting out another third place finish. He's, Such an impressive run. Yeah, Chad's in uh, third place right now, doing what he has to do to maximize his points, but it's 25 seconds off of the leader right now. But Chad is thinking big picture. 
He's here to win a championship, and he knows by continuing to run, to continue to make his way onto the podium each and every week, instead of just trying to nurse himself back to health, he keeps himself alive in this championship. Very much alive at that. Reed, of course, knows what it takes to win championships. He's done it before. Looking for another one here this year. And he really brought everybody up in Toronto when he took the season opening run. Here's Ivan Tedesco now. This is Stuart, or uh, Carmichael's teammate getting inside a window. They make a little contact. And Tedesco gets by. Boy, it has been a rough night for Kevin Windham. And, and he, here is Stewart on his final lap. Yeah, Windham just getting lapped here. He's in the middle of this battle for the lead. Stewart looking for back-to-back -back wins. He is currently lapped all the way up to eighth. Oh, and Tedesco and him get together. That was very interesting. I think to I see James Stewart looking over to his right, making Tedesco wasn't going to come into play, but... Checkered flag for James Stewart. Back-to-back -back wins for the Kawasaki rider. Carmichael finishes a close second. Just over a second behind him. Stewart is very happy. He's definitely shown that uh, he's got the speed and he's putting it, it together. You see Ivan Tedesco here. What he's saying is, hey, I was looking back. I didn't think you were going to cut down. I was afraid that was going to happen. So right now they're just sorting it out that that wasn't an intentional. And remember, they came together in practice in Toronto, and that's what hurt Tedesco's hand. So that's a big moment there to clear the air. Yeah, that could have that could have been uh, really tricky there. Well, let's show you what happened there between the two. So Tedesco's thinking Stewart's going to go wide. I've been watching Stewart. He's been cutting down every lap. So Tedesco's trying to get out of the way, and they just came together. Here's a look at our Suzuki results. Suzuki's Ricky Carmichael finishes in second behind the Kawasaki of James Stewart, and Yamaha's Chad Reed comes home in third with the Honda of Travis Preston in fourth. Now let's head down to Aaron. Well, the lucky number seven took the lead on lap seven. James, a little bit of bumping and grinding going out there between you and Ivan Tedesco. Were you expecting that retaliation? <laughs> you know, it's always in the back of my mind, you know, something like that can happen. But, you know, even like if he got me back on purpose, no hard feelings on my part. You know, like I told him I'm sorry after the end of the race, even though he hit me. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't have any grudge to him, but I got the job done. That's what that was counts. And uh, after the red flag, it was good to put my head back down and uh, work hard. Well, it's been 20 years since Kawasaki has won the first two rounds, and the man to do it is this man, James Stewart. He pulls it off here tonight. It's all part of the road to Las Vegas. Just one more stop as we make our way to Sam Boyd Stadium, first weekend in May, to wrap up the championship chases. Let's show you how the point standings look as we complete the night here in Phoenix in the World GP point standings. The reigning champ, James Stewart, has a one-point lead over Ricky Carmichael, Chad Reed. Another good performance here tonight. Sits only seven markers behind. In the AMA standings, James looking to win that title for the first time, and he's got a six-point lead. You know, the Suzuki was uh, good. We worked and worked this week, and the bike was a lot better. And, uh, you know, happy to get out here safe. Uh, Would have liked to win, but uh, all you can do is do your best. And uh, just, man, I want to get a win, but uh, you can only do all you can do. Ricky Carmichael taking home second place and looking forward to sitting in his stands at Anaheim 2. Here's a look at our Toyota moving forward replay. This is how the pass for the lead was done. James Stewart, a tremendous run through the very challenging whoop section, beats Carmichael to the corner, gets the drive out into the lead, and was never challenged from that point on as he takes back-to-back -back wins in two weekends. For Jeff Emig and Aaron Baines, I'm Ralph Shaheen. So long from Phoenix, where James Stewart is your winner. CBS Sports coverage of the M's Mobile AMA Supercross Series continues next Sunday with Anaheim 2 at 1 p.m. Eastern. Coming up next, a Big Ten showdown as Illinois travels to East Lansing, Michigan to take on Michigan State. Later today at 4 p.m. Eastern, it's the NFL Today with a look at the Chargers throwing star Phillip Rivers plus up-to-the-minute playoff news and more.